Hello guys, welcome to the channel. So we have got a really interesting problem today which is find triplets with zero sum. The problem is asked by companies like Amazon, Google and Facebook. So let me start with the problem statement. It says that you are given an array ARR of n integers. You have to check whether it contains a triplet with uh, that sums up to zero. One note is given here which says that return one if there is at least one triplet following the condition else return zero. So the function is going to be a function of boolean type, right? It is going to return either true or false based on whether we have the triplet or not. Now one input is given here. Let me explain the problem uh, with the given example. So we are given an array which contains the element 0, minus 1, 2, minus 3 and 1. First of all, let me write all the possible triplets of the array. So I have 0, minus 1, uh, then 2. After this, I have 0, minus 1, minus 3, then 0, minus 1, 1. After this, I have 0, 2, minus 3, 0, 2, 1. Then I have 0, minus 3, 1, right? After this, I have minus 1, 2, minus 3, then minus 1, 2, 1, then minus 1, minus 3, 1. After this, I have 2, minus 3, 1, right? So these are the triplets. Let me write the sum of the uh, elements in the triplets as well. So first of all, we have the sum as 1, then I have minus 4, then I have 0, then I have minus 1, after this 3, after this minus 2, then again minus 2, then I have uh, 2, right? After this I have minus 3, then I have uh, 0. So these are the sum values. Now you can uh, see that I have got two triplets which has the sum as 0, right? So the output is going to be 1 for this example. Now I hope you have understood the problem well. So let's talk about the solution now. Okay, so I have written the same example as given in the problem statement. And the first approach that will come to your mind is quite similar to the one I have explained here, right? All you need to do is you need to write all the possible triplets of the array. And after this, you can check the sum of triplets is zero or not, right? How to implement this? This is the question. In order to implement this, we are going to, you can see that how, uh, you can see the way I have written all the triplets. I have started with the element zero. Then I have written all the triplets which are starting with minus one. After this, I have written all the triplets which are starting with 2, right? After this, there is no any triplet which is starting with minus 3. The reason is you can see that uh, I have minus 3, 1 as the first second element. Then there is no element which can be the third element of the triplet, right? Similarly, if I start with mine, uh, 1, then I will not have any second or third element of the triplet. So this means that the candidate for first element uh, being a triplet is from i equals to 0. 2 and minus 2, right? I hope you don't have any doubt in this particular thing because you can see that this is minus n minus 2, which is the last index, right? After this, for any element that can be the candidate for being the second element of the triplet, I will start from j equals to i plus 1 because you can see that uh, if I start from minus 1, then I will write all the elements after uh, like minus 1, right? As the second element. Why I am doing this? The reason behind this is, let me write uh, two triplets, which is 0, minus 1 and 2. Okay, uh, the two triplets are going to be, first of all, I have minus 1, 2 and minus 3. Then I have uh, 2, minus 1 and minus 3. Both are triplets and both are possible in this array, right? But the sum of both the triplets is going to be uh, same because we have the same elements. So that's why I'm avoiding right of, uh, writing this type of triplets. I'm just writing the triplets which contains uh, like some elements only once, right? Okay, now I'll start from j equals to i plus 1, 2 and minus 1 because for the second element, you can see that this cannot be the second uh, like second element because after this, I don't have any third element, right? After this, I will have uh, the candidate for third element as k equals to j plus 1, 2 and right? So these are the element which can be the third element. After this, I will have all the possible candidates. So in order to implement this, I have to run three natural groups. i equals to 0 to i smaller than n minus 2, right? After this, I'll write one more loop, loop inside this, which is j equals to i plus 1, then j is smaller than n minus 1, right? And j plus plus. Inside this, 
uh, I will have all the pairs, but I don't want the pairs. I want the triplets. So I write one more loop. K equals to j plus one. Then k is smaller than n, right? And k plus plus. Inside this, I will surely have all the possible triplets, right? And all I need to do is I need to uh, ask from the triplets, hey, whether you have the sum as zero. So if the sum of triplet is equal to zero, which is array of i plus array of j plus array of k. If this sum is equal to zero, then I can simply return one or I can return true, whatever you say, right? And just after this, if this whole loop is completed and we, we were not able to find any triplet, in that case, we can simply return false, right? So this is the first approach that we have. And the complexity of first approach uh, is O of n cube, right? You can see that uh, we have uh, we are running three nested loop here, right? Okay, so this is the complexity which is not supposed to be a good complexity because it is not going to work for the large inputs, right? So can we optimize this? Of course, we can optimize this. And in the second approach, I am going to talk about what optimizations we can do. And we can bring the complexity from n cube to O of n square. Right. Let me start explaining this. So you can see here I have written the same array which is given in the problem statement and I have written all the possible triplets. There is a reason. I want, I want to explain something very important to you guys. So first of all, let me mark those triplets which has the sum as zero. So I have two triplets, right, which has the sum as zero. And first of all, let me write two minus three and one. There is something special about these triplets. So let's say for the first element which is array of i right i am writing array of i because array of i can be any random element there are three possible candidates for array of i right we have already discussed it now if this particular element is array of i then the sum of remaining two elements will be surely minus of array of i if this uh, if you want the sum of this triplet to be zero then this condition should be true right even if you take this as the example like 0, minus 1, 1, then you can see that uh, if this is array of i, uh, then th the sum of these two elements is going to be minus of array of i, right? Uh, so this is a really important observation. What we can do is, we can first of all iterate over all the elements from 0 to n minus 2. And after this, we can look for a pair which has the given sum, right? This is like a pair with given sum given sum this is very important so let me write the pseudo code for this and you will get the whole idea of what i'm trying to say so what i'll do is uh, i'll simply start with the for loop for i equals to zero then i smaller than n minus two then i plus plus this is going to give me all the possible first elements right which are the uh, the element which are the candidate for being the first element you can see that 0 then minus 1 and then 2 fine inside this I will say that my target that I want is uh, minus array of i once I have got the target sum once I have got the target sum then I can simply return true fine okay and what is the range where I want the target so you can see that if I am at any position array of i so I look for the remaining two element after uh, like ith position right so i'll look at from i plus 1 to n minus 1 so i can simply write uh, my range is low equals to i plus 1 and then high equals to n minus 1 so if i'm able to get the pair in this range then i can simply return true right because i have got minus array of i for any element array of i this means that the sum of triplet is going to be zero so now i'll write find pair find pair if possible find pair if possible right and i have to find pair with the given sum which is target now the question is how to find the pair with the given sum if we are able to find the pair then we are done right and if this loop is completed and we were not able to find the pair then i have to simply return false this is the approach that we are going to follow now i am going to discuss how we can find the pair with given sum so I have written here pair with given sum again very important and very interesting concept guys and this is again uh, like a standard DSA problem which is asked by a lot of companies. So what is this? In this particular type of problem we are given an array and we have to find a particular 
like a pair which has the given sum right so this is how the name is pair with given sum let me take an example so let's say i have an array which have the element 0 7 then 1 2 minus 5 right this is the array and the target that we want is 3 we want the pair with target sum as 3 so let's see how we can do this the first step the first step is going to be sorting the array sort the array I'll definitely talk about why we were sorting the array and what is the intuition behind sorting. But first of all, uh, just sort the array without any question, right? If we sort the array, then the element that we will have is uh, like minus 5 first, then 0, 1, 2, and 7, right? After this, we can start a range from low to high. So we have a low here and we have a high here. Okay, and now what we can do is we can write the sum of the element at low and high so i'll write the sum as sum equals to array of low plus array of high right this is what we can do now you can see that the sum of these two element is 2 right and we want the target sum as 3 so the sum is not equal to 3 you can see that the sum is smaller than 3 so if the sum is smaller than, than 3, then in order to make the sum equal to 3, I need to increase this sum, isn't it? I need to increase this sum. How to increase this sum? In order to increase this sum, we can either increase the value of low or we can uh, decrease the value of high. But hold on, decreasing the value of i is not going to increase the sum because this is the maximum element, right? And if I try to decrease the high, then it is going to reduce the sum because this element will be smaller than the previous one. So this is not going to work. If we increase the value of low, then this is smaller element and this element will, will be a greater, right? So there is a possibility that the, this particular increment can increase the sum. I am using the word possibility because it may be possible that we have minus 5 here as well, right? That's why I am saying possibility. So what we can do is, if, uh, if my sum, sum is smaller than target, target, in that case we can increase the value of low so we will do low plus plus right and if the sum is equal to target like this is the first case if the sum is equal to target this is very important and the main case if this condition is true then we have to return true right return true because we have got the target sum and this is our goal goal of the question right so this is the first condition else if else if the sum is smaller than target because I am writing else if because if the sum is not equal to target then there are two conditions either sum is smaller than target or sum is greater than target so if the sum is greater than target so now if I try to increase the value of low then low will come here and the sum will now become 0 plus 7 which is 7 right this is the new sum this is the new sum and this sum is something which is greater than the target which is 3 right so I have to decrease the sum how to decrease the sum? We have already discussed it. We can decrease the value of high to decrease the sum, right? So I have to do high minus minus in this case. High minus minus. So once we have done high minus minus, then high will point to this particular element now, right? So we have got low as 0 and high as 2. So again the sum will be equal to 2. Again the sum will be equal to 2. And once the sum is 2, then I know the sum is smaller, right? I have to increase the value of low in that case. And how to increase the value of low? I can simply do low plus plus. And after this, low will point to this particular place, right? And what is the sum now? Sum is 1 plus 2, which is nothing but 3. So if the sum is 3, then the sum is equal to target, right? So we can simply return true in that case. This is all we need to do in order to get our problem solved, right? And we can write this particular thing in loop while my low is something which is smaller than high right this is the point till we have to uh, run the loop and if this loop is completed and we were not able then we can simply return false so this is the approach and this is very important problem guys i want you to search this problem on any platform like geeks for geeks or lead code and then you have to solve this problem with this approach right if you are able to solve the problem then let me know in the comment section okay and after this now I can simply write uh, like the approach, the same approach in this particular part because we have got our low here and high and all we need to do is we need to get the target which is already there, right? So we can simply solve the problem now. Now I hope you have got the idea behind the approach. So let me show you the code now. 
Okay, so here is the code. I have written the C++ code on the left hand side and Java and C, uh, Python code here, right? So you can see that first of all, I'm sorting the array. This is the first step, right? After this, I'm running a for loop here. And inside this for loop, I have got my range from I plus one to N minus one, right? After this, I have the target. And then all I need to do is I need to iterate over uh, the condition like y j is smaller than k and then I can simply do this particular thing, right? Okay, I'm using g and k instead of low and high here, but I hope you will understand this particular thing. So you can see that how I'm uh, like calculating the target value. And if this condition is true, then I have to return true. This is the Java code you can see here and showing you the Python code. So this is the Python code. The change is only of this index, the concept is going to remain same, right? So I hope you have understand, understood this particular problem and the solution and the most optimal approach as well. Uh, the complexity is going to be O of N for this particular uh, approach, right? If you guys like the explanation, then you can hit the like button. Thank you.